All right. <clears throat> Hello. So we are on to one of my favorites, the Dunning-Kruger effect. Now, no, it's big, because I... Took me a long time to draw that, let me tell you something. It's called the Dunning-Kruger effect. Now, there's a few quotes that kind of encapsulate this idea. Um, Real knowledge is to know the extent of one's ignorance. Confucius. I know nothing except the fact of my ignorance. Plato, the fool doth think he is wise, but the wise man knows himself to be a fool. I think you know who said that. Ignorance more frequently begets confidence than does knowledge. And to succeed in life, you need two things, ignorance and confidence. Mark Twain, beware of false knowledge. It is more dangerous than ignorance. George Bernard Shaw, one of the most one of the most painful things about our time is that those who feel certain are stupid and those with an imagination and understanding are filled with doubt. Bertrand Russell. So, I'm going to move over to the graph here. So, on the x-axis, you have knowledge. Knowledge in a field. Knowledge in a subject. The y-axis, you have confidence it's low to high so down here is sort of the huh or, or like the what I, I just got a um, the uh, sound of a uh, little John the what huh okay uh, I think Dave Chappelle made it pretty popular but just how my mind works so right here you're down at the huh you you know somebody brings up um, field theory or gauge theory it's like what you don't know what it is. You have low knowledge, low confidence in the subject. But then it, it shoots up here. And this is the I know everything person. And we, we all know those people. There's a lot of them. So their confidence is super high. Their knowledge is a little bit more than the person doesn't know anything. But as you see, the knowledge is very low. But their confidence is super high with their low knowledge. Now, when you start moving down the slope this way, you get to like, there's more to this than I thought. There's a lot more going on than I first thought. As you slowly move down, you get a little bit more knowledge in the subject. You're gonna hit the point, I'm never gonna understand this. I'm never gonna understand mathematics. I'm never gonna understand calculus. I'm never gonna understand algebra. I'm not gonna understand biology. I'm not gonna fully understand all the inner working pieces in World War II or World War I. You get over there. But then you start moving up and you start getting a little bit more confidence with the more knowledge you get. You might realize like, oh, you know, in algebra, there's things called axioms. If you understand axioms and sort of the logic and steps you do, you're going to be fine. Then you find deeper logic and like physics and stuff like that. Like, oh, I'm dealing with a mass of time and a length a lot of the time. If I can understand that stuff, I can extrapolate outwards. Sorry. So you're going to get over to, it's starting to make sense. Over in here, it's me making sense. And then you're going to come here to like the expert. And it's going to be like, trust me, it's complicated. It's not that simple. But one of the worst things is, Here's the knowledge, here's the confidence. You're very knowledgeable here, but your confidence isn't as high as that person who thinks they know everything but actually don't. And this, this goes into a big problem. We as individuals, we as human beings, we like confident people. We like going towards confidence. Maybe not going towards, but we're sort of attracted to it. It's very appealing, especially in politics. You want that person to, hey, I know for certain this tax regulation is going to work. Now, is that person an economist? Most of the time not. Most politicians do stuff in law. Um, they might have economists and stuff like on their side or that they know, but they don't know everything. But you have to come off as confident if you want to have people follow you. So this is a very dangerous thing. And you find this all the time on the internet. And this is where echo chambers can arise as well. That's another thing I want to go into. Maybe I shouldn't mix echo chambers in with this. Maybe I should just do the Dunning-Kruger 
as itself. But yeah, so that's pretty much the Dunning-Kruger effect. It's that, you know, one way you could put it is like dumb people think they're very smart and smart people think they're very dumb. That's another way of looking at it. I think there's a very simplistic degree with complex social phenomena. There's a lot more going on, but this is just a good gist, you know. You know, if I'm talking to somebody and they say, hey, I know exactly what needs to happen, I'm like, I don't really want to talk to this person. I don't want the person I'm talking to be 100% certain. Because out of all the best conversations I've ever had, you go into it with prior knowledge, but you're not so, you know, engraved in your ideas or thoughts. You're, there's kind of a, a fluid, flexible nature as the other person. That's when you can have good discussion. But when you get two people who are like this, most people on the internet, um, and you argue on Facebook, I'm like, hey, why should you vote for this guy? Why shouldn't you? Or go into politics and you go through those threads, which I think just causes cancer. Um, you'll find that you have people so confident in this one thing, so confident in the other. When they clash, it's like, okay, we need people who are confident but knowledgeable as well. There's two things you're dealing with. But yeah, that's the Dunning-Kruger effect. Um, it's pretty interesting. Um, oof, pretty interesting. I'm interested in like where people would put themselves. I mean, I maybe I'm here, but I, I could be there. I could definitely be the the fool that thinks he knows. Definitely could be. It's not out of the possibility. But even me saying it's not out of the possibility makes me almost sound as if. I'm farther down, which makes me more probable that I'm there. I don't know, but yeah, that's the Dunning-Kruger effect. Um, I think it's a very interesting one. You see it all the time. And I think it's a big one. I mean, you have you know Confucius, Plato, um, Shakespeare talking about it. Um, Bertrand Russell, who's my MVP. I love Bertrand Russell. Uh, George Bernard Shaw, another one, Mark Twain, a lot of people who sort of talk about this idea as well. And if a lot of people are talking about it, I think it's a good thing to understand. Yeah, that is the uh, Dunning-Kruger effect. Um, thank you very much.